how many are there at home? Wait for two more minutes and then we'll start the class. Please ask your friends to join the class. It's very awkward, you know, when we say that, you know, ask your friends to join the class. What is there to ask? It's your duty to join the class at 10.45. Everybody should do it. But every day is not correct. Two full modules for your second interviews. Just prepare for the test. You've got ample amount of time. Prepare well for the test. I think I've shared both the notes. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. The portions we held them kind of the market in Samania. I held them now. I only held the gap can any classic or even classic. Okay, Shumana, you put your journey here, sir. You have to second module, uh, sorry, fourth module, Mugustai. There is no, nothing much to discuss in fourth module. Last class, we had uh, discussed about the TV curve, correct? The past thing is voltage characteristic curve. This was done in the last class. We had plotted the curve like this. If you can recall, the curve was like this. VGS versus C curve was like this. Correct? This is how we plotted. This is C accumulation, which is equal to COX. This is C depletion. This is again COX. In this case, C depletion is coming down. In this case, again, it is C depletion only, but it is raising. So this is accumulation. This is depletion. This is, what is this? Moderate inversion. This is strong inversion. Correct? These are the things that we discussed. Why am I putting these statements again? Because the next article, what we have, is again relevant to this, which speaks about the frequency effects. Which tells us what happens to the capacitance value when you apply a low frequency or a high frequency signal. Remember last class I told, or whenever we discuss, I told that you know both the signals are available at the input, that is at the gate terminal. One is the DC, other one is the AC. The differential change in the charge, what we indicate there, is because of the AC component, which is sitting on the DC. And that AC can have a lower frequency or a higher frequency. Am I audible and is the screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So now we have to just again speak about the same CV characteristic curve by looking at the gate voltage with a lower frequency or a high frequency signal. Let us worry about the low frequency signal. And this graph, what I've written here, is basically an ideal graph. So, how would the practical graph look like? There is a small change which we have to indicate when it comes to a practical graph. And that only small change is this. The dropping down of the capacitance value will happen a little bit earlier than 
vg equal to 0 so here the dropping down of the capacitance will start from vg equal to 0 but for a practical case slightly before vg 0 that is when it is almost nearing to 0 you can see the capacitance value dipping coming down okay that's the only change what we see in a practical graph so this is a practical all other things will remain same except for the small deviation so the inversion or the depletion process begins slightly before vg equal to zero itself okay so there is a space charge region getting created the moment vg starts coming towards zero not at zero but before to zero only and that is a small deviation what we observe so now coming to the frequency effects as far as the low frequency and high frequencies are concerned do you remember one of the statement that we had made even though it may not have a direct relevance to this uh, discussion that we are going to have we spoke about the channel transit time remember we had talked about the channel transit time what is the meaning of this channel transit time if there is a channel let us say the distance or the width or the length of this channel is equal to l and there is an electron sitting here if at all if it has got certain velocity which I'll call it as VD, then it would require certain time to traverse this length to reach the other side. If you are applying a voltage which is of larger value, larger frequency value, what is the meaning of it? To the gate, if you are applying a voltage VG, and remember this VG, what I'm talking is an AC signal, if it is varying swiftly, varying swiftly, means higher frequency what happens the electron will not have enough time to reach the drain because by that time the next cycle would have got appeared so this vg is varying very fastly so the electron is unable to cope up with the differential change that happens as far as the vg is concerned this was with reference to the channel transit time and this can be applied or it, it is applicable elsewhere also whenever you are applying a higher frequency to any electronic device if electron does not have sufficient amount of time to reach the destination, reach the target, it will fail. It will fail there itself. It will die off there itself, so which means that the conduction is kind of not happening there. This is what we can put. It. Okay. So the same kind of effect even prevails here also. So we'll see what is that. Before I give you the you know understanding of that, let me bring back this. Uh, space charge region now we are talking about the high frequency remember we are talking only about the high frequency so there is a gate voltage applied here remember i'm talking about the ac voltage at high frequency so there is a space i'm sorry there is a charge dq sorry q which is positive and there is a differential charge also because of ac which we indicated like this. Now, because of this positive charge on the metal side, on the P side, what you will see, we have already seen this. And let us say that this is in the inversion. This is in the inversion process. So there is a negative charge getting accumulated on this other side and there is also a space charge region created <coughs> and if the inversion process has just begun what will be the width of this if the inversion process has just begun what will be the width of this it has just begun what will be this width What will be the width of this if the inversion process has just started what is the width of space charge region
if the inversion process has just begun at which point are we here in this graph and somebody tell me where are we if the inversion process has just begun we are at this point this is the beginning of the inversion process and what is this voltage at that point threshold voltage exactly so simple vth it has just begun so what will be the width of this then at threshold what will be the width of the space charge we had denoted it as what xdth exactly at vg equal to vth we write this as xdth it will it will be equal to the threshold voltage now this is a scenario what we are at so the ac voltage is having a higher frequency there is a differential change there is a positive charge on the metal side we expect the channel to get created on the other side in this process of channel getting created during the inversion process we see few things now what has to get accumulated here a negative charge has to get accumulated which means that electrons should come and reside on this side of the silicon dioxide layer so there are two sources which will provide the electrons at the silicon dioxide layer i'll write that now during the inversion process during the inversion process electrons should reside to come and reside near to silicon dioxide layer that is right here on this side now there are two sources which will provide these electrons and which are those number 1 who will provide the electron to the silicon dioxide side last per our last class discussion who will be provide the uh, providing the electrons who has to provide the electron there is a space charge region here who will be providing the electrons very simple look at the diagram look at this diagram and tell me who provides the electron what is there inside the space charge region what are the other one last class made part i guess again in what we did in the last class is what i am asking base charge region provides the electron the space charge region has got ions the moment you start applying a larger voltage here the space charge region will start releasing the electron if it is releasing an electron it also has to release what a hole so basically a electron hole pair is getting created that we are interested in what is the amount of electrons which are coming towards the silicon dioxide so one of the source what we see is the space charge region itself this is what was discussed in the last class apart from this a small amount of charge carriers will also be provided by one more filler and who is that the minority charge carriers of p type what are minority charge carriers in p type it will also have electrons so these electrons will also come towards the silicon dioxide side so if there is a electron here it will try to come towards the 
silicon dioxide side. So there are two sources which are going to provide the electrons to SiO2 side. Clear? But what is the point here? The input frequency is quite high. Now how are we going to relate the input frequency with the electrons which are generated because of these two? Either because of the space charge region or because of the minority charge carriers. In P type. So let us exaggerate the space charge region what we have got. Let us consider this to be the space charge region. On this side is what we have the silicon dioxide layer. This is the P type. So what I have indicated here is the space charge region. So there is a differential change in the electrons, I'm sorry, uh, oh, the carriers now. There is a differential change in the carrier. So what I'm indicating here is DQ. At what rate is this DQ changing? At what rate is DQ changing? Oh, I'm sorry, I should have indicated DQ change here. I should have indicated DQ change on the other side. I just indicated it inside the silicon dioxide layer. I should have written one more, one more line here, then a DQ change. This is DQ. At what rate is it changing? What is my assumption at the gate terminal? The frequency is very high. If the frequency is very high, what will be the rate of change of the charge? It's very high because if the frequency is large, it means that the signal is swiftly changing from positive to negative, negative to positive. This is what is a high frequency signal. So if the change is happening, positive peak to negative peak, negative to again one more positive peak, if it is changing at a faster rate, the rate of change is also very large. What do we conclude from this? If the rate of change of charge on one side of the metal plate is very large, then the electrons which are here, which has to come out, which has to get released out of the space charge region, will be what? What is going to happen to it? Let us assume this width to be x dth because now the inversion process has to begin. So we're applying a sufficiently larger gate voltage. If the rate of change of charge is very large, it means that it means that electrons will have to swiftly drift towards the silicon dioxide layer, but it may be unable to unable to drift towards the SiO2 layer because of what? Because of high DQ rate, rate of change of charge rate. Because of high DQ rate, and why is this high DQ rate? Because of high frequency. So electrons will not be able to really drift towards the silicon dioxide layer side. And the electrons even here also. It takes larger time to go towards this, but by then the rate of change would have been different, would have become different. Why? Because the change of frequency is happening very fastly. It's a larger frequency, I should say. So that is the reason why all these electrons which are there either in the space charge region or in the p-type as minority will not be able to go towards the silicon dioxide layer. So what has happened now? Remember, this is the beginning of the uh, you know inversion. So what is the equation that we used to indicate the capacitance effect at the beginning of inversion? That is at this point. Where is it? Right at okay. there is a graph. Right at this point. What is the equation for capacitance that we wrote? If you can recall and tell me. We wrote it as what? C depletion itself. What is the equation that we had for C depletion? Epsilon OX divided by TOX plus Epsilon OX divided by Epsilon SD multiplied by T, sorry, what is that? X, T, 
dth. X dth. This is the equation what we wrote at the beginning of the inversion. At the beginning of the inversion. This equation is valid at Vg equal to Vth. That is when the depletion width has gone to the maximum. That is why the Th threshold value is indicated. Now, this capacitance will it change when there is a further increase in the voltage with a higher frequency at the gate? I'll put this question to you. Will the above capacitance value change with increase? Increase in Vg, increase in Vg beyond Vth, increase in Vg beyond Vth, that is very important, at, at larger frequencies, at larger frequencies. What is your answer to this? Understand the question. First of all, tell me, have you understood the question? Have you understood the concept till here? One or two yes is that? I'll be happy. Can somebody answer to it? Did you understand the question at first instance? No, sir. Oh, oh. What did you not understand then? Did you understand the concepts that I told here in the beginning? Are you able to understand? The concept what was told? And yes or no will be helpful to me. I can read it though. Hell the Jana Katag in the Heli, at least he knows that the Hell Kurti, by which held up. Somebody said something. Hell, you are in a kid can you repeat it once again, sir? I'll repeat it once again. What is that? Tell me that much. Tell me that much. What is the help? Starting in the help. What is the basic concept of Dilkodi? When you have any material, it can be a semiconductor or a conductor. It could be anything. When you have any material, if the current has to flow through it, remember the most important thing is the, the lifetime, the lifetime of the charge carrier. Let us consider the charge carrier to be an electron because we are talking about an end channel. So I should be more concentrating on the electron. You can apply this to hole also for a P channel. But right now it is a conductor. So what we have is a conductor here. So in this conductor, if the current has to flow through it, it depends on the lifetime of the electron. We call it as a mean lifetime. The mean lifetime depends on two things. One is 
the length of the particular conductor. Second one is, if at all you are applying a voltage to this particular conductor, if at all you are applying a voltage to this conductor, let us say it is a AC voltage, it depends on the frequency value also. Why is frequency so very important? Because frequency will decide, frequency will decide. I want somebody to complete the statement. Frequency decides what? Frequency decides the time value. What is this time which is relevant to this frequency? It is relevant to the mean lifetime of the electron. If the time value is very small here, which means that the frequency is very large, it only means that for this electron to travel all the way from this point till this point is very less. The time given by this input signal for this electron to reach the other side is very, very less. If it is not matching with the mean lifetime of the electron, let us say, then obviously, or I should say the transit time, obviously this electron will never reach the other side. It will die off there itself. So it means that the current value automatically comes down. That is the meaning of it. Okay. This is the just what we take further into the discussion of frequency effects in the MOSFET. Is this point very clear to all of you? This was already dealt yes, earlier sir. in the channel transit time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, electrons again, this to time code. Time code land here. Electrons travel and like time sigabi land. So, higher frequencies are either a problem. We have to adopt it. I should not be talking about all those. But this is the whole idea behind it to understand it. Frequency effect as far as high frequency is concerned. Now let us come back to our discussion. Let me not start with the inversion layer. We'll again start with this graph. E graph to Gorana. E graph Munchana now Bardag Hogu. VG versus C. Let us start with the negative gate voltage. When gate voltage is negative, you'll bury the name reference goes correct. When VG is negative. Tell me, in what operating condition will be transistor? MOSFET, how operating condition is there? When VG is negative? Accumulation. Accumulation is there. Accumulation is there. Do you want to go to the other side? Graph.
Just give me one more minute. So let us use this graph. What is this graph of VGS or VG versus C? So right now, I was saying when VG is when VG when VG is negative. When VG is negative, what will happen? Yes, we say that the MOSFET is in the accumulation process. Now, I'll ask you this question. In accumulation, is there a channel creation? In the accumulation process, when the gate voltage is negative, is there a channel creation quick? No channel. If there is no channel, is there a current? Is there a question of electrons flowing? No, sir. No, sir. no electrons will flow. So, whatever the capacitance effect that you observe during this accumulation process, what do we call that uh, capacitance value as? C accumulation, correct? And that equation we have already written epsilon OX divided by POX. So, the same constant capacitance effect will come into picture. I'm writing the ideal graph. So allow me to write the ideal graph. So this will be COX, which is equal to epsilon OX divided by POX. And this gate voltage negative, what we are saying, is a combination of DC plus AC. And I'm assuming the AC frequency to be high enough. But I'll put one more question here. No matter whether the AC, what you're applying is high or low, high or low, is this graph going to remain the same till here, till Vg equal to zero? Can somebody answer to the question? No matter whether I apply a high AC frequency or a low AC frequency, is the COX going to differ or will it remain same in this accumulation operating condition? What is your point? Anyways, we know that there is no channel creation in accumulation. So there is no exchange of electrons happening either between source or drain or between P type as well as the silicon dioxide layer part, there is no electron flow anywhere as such. So, do you see any change happening to COX or C accumulation at higher frequency or at lower frequency? I think you should be able to answer to this question at least. It remains the same. It remains the same. So, no matter whether it is high input frequency or a low input frequency this COX would remain the same because there is no question or question of exchange of charge carriers happening. So COX is going to be the same in the accumulation process for both high and low. What is the next thing? Remember, I'm writing ideal graph. I should make you people aware of this. It's an ideal graph what I'm writing. Further to it, what should happen? The capacitance value should come down. And now we are targeting from Vg equal to 0 up till Vg equal to Vth. So in this region, do you again observe the uh, exchange of carriers happening? Now let us say Vg is positive. When Vg 
is positive, but Vg is less than Vth, less than Vth. This is what is depletion process or depletion operating condition. Is there a channel creation? No channel creation. But there is a creation of depletion region. But remember, there is no exchange of charge carriers. There is no electron flow happening. Electrons are not flowing here. You only see the depletion region getting created. So the electrons are not flowing in, even here also. Channel is not there anyways. Depletion region is getting created, but electrons are not coming towards the silicon dioxide layer. Do you observe this particular graph to change, no matter whether it is a high frequency or low frequency? What is your answer? What is the capacitance uh, equation that we wrote for this? C depletion until the cutting until the you know, threshold voltage. We wrote it as what? Epsilon O X divided by T O X plus Epsilon OX divided by Epsilon SD multiplied by XD. Remember, XD has not reached the threshold yet. We are in this region. We are in this region. We are in this region. We are right from here up till this point. We are right now within this region. So is this curve going to get affected by the low and high frequency? The answer to it same as the previous one no channel no electron flow Obviously, again remains the same again remains the same so the high and low frequency graph for cv again would remain the same so till the threshold voltage no effect and that is why earlier when i explained i started with the inversion i was about to give this information but i thought people would understand it but let me give you this you know the right flow so till the threshold voltage, for all negative voltages, till the positive threshold voltage, the graph of CV will remain same for both high frequencies as well as low frequencies. Because no channel creation, no exchange of charge carrier, no electron flow. So things are going to change only after VG becomes greater than VTH. That is what we discussed earlier. Now we shall see when Vg becomes greater than or equal to Vth. I'll take a specific case here. Vg equal to Vth. Vg equal to Vth. So when Vg becomes equal to Vth, I can take the same equation even now also. Why is that so? Because when you see the space charge region, you will see the space charge region created like this. Because now as I said, the inversion process has already begun. Let me write the space charge region first. What is that? This is a space charge region. Now, where are we discussing? We are discussing a specific case of Vg equal to Vth. And we should agree to this point that the width of this will be equal to x dth. We have already done this discussion. Don't tell me we did not understand this. And you can also indicate a small amount of electron accumulation right here. Because we have already gone past or we are, we are, we are at this Vg equal to Vth. You can expect a very thin layer of negative charge residing beside or nearer to silicon dioxide. Got the point? Till here, all of you are okay with this? Yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. Now we should worry about what is going to happen at higher frequencies. To make you understand what is going to happen at higher frequencies, I told, I told two different cases are there. I'm sorry, two different sources would come into picture then. Even though we do not, we know we need not have to discuss about the sources. We only have to speak about whether the electrons flows or not. But we just made these two points. P type material is there. Electrons will be the minority carriers in this. These will also contribute to the charge residing nearer to the silicon dioxide layer. The space charge region is anyways there. It will also deliver electrons towards the other side. So these are the two sources. One is space charge region. Other one is the minority carriers in the p-type. Now for these electrons to really flow to the other side, it all depends on what kind of gate voltage frequency you are applying. 
the gate voltage frequency that you apply here. We are talking about small VG here, which is AC voltage, which is AC voltage. Understood. So if this frequency is large enough, what is the meaning of it? Let me indicate, allow me to indicate only the differential change right here. What I'm writing here is only the differential change, even though you see capital Q also there. Right now, I'm concentrating only on DQ part. The rate at which this charge changes is large. Why? Because the frequency is large. Agree all of you? All of you yes. agree to that? Yes, sir. Yeah. Even though the voltage is large here, the frequency is also large there. So because of larger frequency, the rate of change of the charge on this side is more. What is the effect on the other side? We expect the negative charge to come and reside, but the transition is happening so quickly that these electrons which are very far away from the silicon dioxide or the electrons which are there residing as ions inside the space charge region is not given enough time to really come out of it and start residing near the silicon dioxide. And who is the sole responsible for all these? This fellow, frequency large enough. So the change is happening so quickly that the moment this goes up and the electron starts coming towards the silicon dioxide layer, charge again comes back to zero because the sine wave is so quickly varying up and down, up and down, and all the time crossing the zero level. It is so quickly happening that DQ has gone so weirdly to a larger value. I mean, so quickly changing that it is not giving enough time for the electrons. In that way, in simplest way, I can say electrons are not given enough time to reach SIO2 layer. SIO2 layer side. It is exactly the same case what was happening right here. I the conductor electron frequency the quarter of Jasti then the So the frequency is very high. So electrons are not getting time to reach the destination. So electrons will stand there itself. Wherever it was, it is going to stand there itself. It is kind of confused. Things are so quickly changing that electron is not getting time at all to reach the other side. So it is standing right there. It is as good as a static charge. It is no more dynamic. It won't flow at all to the other side. The same consequence will be seen even here also. Yes, at least here it Yes, So what I mean to say is whatever extra D, X D T H that was there at the beginning of the inversion layer will continue to exist even further also. Why is that? This electron which is right here will continue to be there itself because it cannot reach the destination. Things are changing faster. So it remains there itself. An electron which is here in the P type will be stagnant there itself. It won't move at all. It will not at all move. So all the electrons wherever it is, whether it is in the space charge region which is active, which is like an ion or in the P type where you have free electrons available, they, they all will stand there itself. They won't move at all. They won't move at all. It is something like, you know, if I quickly try to, you know, uh, you know, uh, surf through an article very quickly, nobody will understand. And, you know, for the starting early, nobody could able to grasp it because the frequency at which I delivered maybe more or at higher frequency, which you were unable to digest or grasp. The same thing happens even for the electrons which are there. So because of this reason, what happens to the capacitance value? Now I think you can give an answer to it. What will happen? How should I write? Remember earlier, the graph was like this. Now you tell me, how should I be writing the graph at higher frequency? After Vg is equal to and greater than Vth. Can somebody complete this graph for me? E depletion capacitance in Agatha. 
So depletion capacity is not This becomes VDTH. I'm sorry, XDTH. And in the space charge region, the electrons are not released. And the ions are released by the electron hole pair. Within the space charge region, EHP is not getting created. So is the case with electrons outside. So nothing is getting disturbed. So what will happen to this XDTH? Will it decrease? Will XDTH reduce at high frequency? What is your answer? Frequency release act till the health I can rate tumba fast I so, electrons burlik sadhya ila chagalila. So XDTH in Agatha. Reduce Agatha Agadilva. Held up answer there. A python children will never go back. Say something, guys. Yes or no? It will not change. Yeah, change Agalandre. Electrons are Chabandratanes depletion with the Kamiago. Ions come depletion with the Kamiakta Hogote. Ions, electrons and release Martha, EHP and release Martha Ilanth Hill there, or the Karcha Martha Ilanth, or the little ions of Hagi, it could be there, pretty again. Yak and Hill, rate of change just the act, fast tag there. So release Martha Okashan Kurtaila. Input voltage, E ions in the electrons of the holes, release Martha Okashan Kurtaila. So E electrons, Valiburliko, Okasha Kurtaila. And then the fast tag change act there, and then Padepa the Hilta. So there won't be any change in the width of the depletion. XDTH will continue to remain XDTH only. In this entire equation, which is the variable parameter, and somebody tell me at least that the C depletion only variable parameter. XDTH. XDTH. So just now we concluded that XDTH has become constant. It won't change at all because the depletion width is not changing due to ions not giving out the electron hole pair so it is unable to deliver it so hagita yen agutte depletion capacity also yen agutte is that complete one goda remain constant it remains constant so it will continue to remain constant so this is what is c depletion that you will get at xd equal to xdth or i can say vg equal to vth vg ge vth banda ga yen it will continue to remain the same even further also. This is only at high frequency, remember. How is the low frequency in the graph? Low frequency in the depletion with the reduce acta as and when you increase the gate voltage, the ions are getting enough time to release the electrons and hole, electron hole pair, generating electron hole pair or releasing the electrons out of the ions, and electrons are coming towards silicon dioxide layer. And even the minority carriers which are there in the P type also contributes to the channel width. So depletion width kamiyatta ho gata hai. Depletion width kamiyat ko lena gata hai. Capacitance C depletion lena gata hai. Will raise. So it means that you will get this graph for low frequency. So andre hale graph yen bardi dhuye. That is for a low frequency signal.
whatever change in the graph that we have written now, which is a constant capacitance C depletion after Vg equal to Vth is for high frequency. This is what is the capacitance effect that we observe in a mass spectrum. I'm sorry, the frequency effect that we observe in a mass spectrum. So is this fine? <coughs> yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. This, yeah, so this will wind up the class yes, for today. Tell me, Prayatna Madi, you should be attentive. I give you a class. The online classes is all part. Some of the kashta agar pa. So that's why the Iranla ready. Face to face connectivity is not So that automatically interest comes in. So try to grasp things. Questions in the Kelly and other any questions in the I'll be happy to answer to you. I think with this we'll wind up the class for today. Okay.